Okay, welcome to the next episode of a Living With series. This time we got the Luxo Barge, the spaceship, the thing with ambient lighting. This is the E450 Coupe and it is lovely. Now, during the review, I kind of... I had mixed feelings about this. It's a lovely car, but it was kind of let down a bit by the suspension because it, it didn't really keep up with the engine in this thing because the engine has got a lot of performance but the suspension kind of is very much comfort orientated now obviously when you're reviewing something you're pushing it to its limits when you're living with it it's very different most of the time you're just driving normally so I kind of want to see what Mercedes were going for with this because it's got an almost AMG engine but a very non AMG chassis setup so I just want to see if it gets frustrating to live with or if I actually like it more because it's like the granddad's car. Anyway, before we get into the serious business, we need to get some fuel because this thing is juicy. Whilst we're talking about fuel as well, let's reset our trip computer. Yep, I'm still, even though I've like gotten used to these controls, still kind of like throws me off sometimes. <laughs> anyway, trip computer reset. Let's get some fuel. this car well I'm gonna do it like every other car we have not really use efficiency mode just drive it normally in comfort and then you know I might give it a little bit of a blast early in the morning but this car really isn't about that I think the engine is mainly there to just make driving a bit easier and make you feel a bit more expensive inside that this car certainly does it makes you feel very expensive but yeah, I kind of want to see if I can get used to all this infotainment gubbins. And I want to see as well, like, if I can just get used to controlling it from the steering wheel, wheel, blah, wheel rather than using all the center console stuff. Because Mercedes basically said, they want your hands on the wheel. You can do everything, you know, with your hands on the wheel, basically. So I want to see if I can get used to that. But yeah, already it's just quiet, it's comfortable, the seats are fantastic in this. You can adjust how far forward the headrest is, which is a major plus for me, um, as I've got quite an arch back. <laughs> but it just means you can get that perfect driving position and just be like super comfortable behind the wheel. And yeah, since the review, if you watch that, if you didn't, I suppose, I'll put a link in the top right hand corner. But if you did watch that, I put some WD-40 on the panoramic roof. Um, after I had finished filming the review and uh, fixed the squeakiness. So yeah, WD-40 definitely works for fixing squeaks in cars. <laughs> and that's one of the problems, I suppose, one of the negatives so far of uh, the panoramic roofs in these is they do tend to squeak after a while because from factory, for some reason, they just didn't put enough grease on them. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, all the like rubber grommets and drainage channels start squeaking and you sort of think when it's an expensive car like this you want it to just kind of work but I think this is where this engine and formatic system is really going to come into its own just like you see a gap plant your foot and you're just off and what I love is Mercedes has calibrated the gearbox for comfort as well so it doesn't just downshift into the lowest possible gear you set off in second gear and it uses the torque of the engine. I wish a lot more cars would do that because I prefer it than, you know, slamming down into first and then giving you full beans after like two seconds of your foot actually being on the throttle. I think it's better to just go, start off a little bit slower and then build boost and just use the torque of the engine because A, it means you start going straight away, like now, and B, it just kind of feels 
smoother, a more luxurious experience, and it, it doesn't jolt the car. Putting your foot down in this thing does use a lot of fuel though at the minute we're sitting at 21 mpg combined says it will do 32 so i'm hoping we get somewhere near that um, although this living with series so far has seen lower figures than what manufacturers claim i think that's mainly because i don't really do a lot of motorway driving you know i'm driving into london most days so yeah i'm guessing we're probably gonna see like 20 five <laughs> maybe on a long-term memory but yeah let's fast forward to the end of the commute and then we can see how much fuel we use i suppose going to work Okay, so this is one thing about having super soft suspension that isn't great, and that's speed bumps. So yes, it absorbs bumps very well, so if I go like over this puddle here, barely feel it, if at all. Um, however, speed bumps, you have to go very slow over, otherwise you do bottom out. Um, so yeah, there is that. Okay, that's first commute over, and we're doing 22 miles per gallon. Now, there has been a bit of traffic, well, a lot of traffic, so not going to get the best figure, but that is as bad as the BMW M3 so far. I'm hoping, after a couple of days, it'll normalise uh, when I'm driving uh, not in traffic. Anyway, next up, I think we'll do the headlight test. So, um, yeah, let's cut to it. A early morning with a lot less cars on the road, hopefully. Okay, welcome to our little headlight test then. And first things first, this looks, well, sick. Is there any word I can... Uh, think of using to describe this it really does look like a spaceship at night doesn't it this thing it, it it's ridiculous really for some might be a bit over the top for me I think you know I like it when manufacturers go a bit over the top sometimes um, would I have it on all the time do you know what I probably would <laughs> call it shallow call it vain call it whatever you like it looks really cool um, but yeah headlights we've got high beam assist in this thing this is where Mercedes are very good though they do light clearly very well indeed down here where it is dark you'll be able to see how good they are Quite like that. <laughs> blind people coming the other way This is a very good early morning car, actually. It wakes up your eyes slowly with lots of blue ambient lighting and a colour of your choice. But yeah, headlights, I'd give them, well, it's, it's like an 8, 9 out of 10, really. The only ones that I think are going to be better are the BMW laser lights. And, I don't actually see many BMWs fitted with those, even 7 Series. Anyway, I'm waffling now. Let's get on to a nice bit of road and see how this thing handles, because, yeah, in the review, I was kind of like, you know, not disappointed, I was just surprised that it was so comfort orientated that you couldn't, you know, rag it down a B road and have a bit of fun with it, because, you know, it's an AMG line car, so you've got the AMG line suspension. So, you know... It should handle a little bit better than, you know, your stock E-Class. And it's an E450 as well, you know, it's got a big engine. Before we get there, one thing I want to say again is... Why is this a 20 mile an hour limit down here? Is it because there's a school, like, a mile away? <laughs> it's just like... 
I've been down this road a million times and I genuinely think I've never seen someone actually do 20 miles an hour down here. I mean, it feels like things are actually getting further away from me than getting closer. Right then, traction control off. Don't need any of that, do we? Uh, Sports Plus, it's going to turn the traction back on as soon as I do that, isn't it? Come on, yes, okay. Yes, it's going to. Of course it's going to. I wonder if there's a way I can turn it off fully. Probably not, but anyway. First gear, give it the beans. Oh, this thing is seriously quick. like the chassis is just very comfortable <laughs> like going over that bump there I mean it controls the car yes but if I want to do a fast direction change you have to be a little bit patient with it and it kind of leaves you feeling a bit like Ooh, what's going on that engine sounds good though, doesn't it? The M276 engine. Yeah, you can tell. They really just want you to ride that low down torque. Get little pops from the exhaust. Don't know if you can hear that on camera. this engine though because you get to like 4,000 revs and you think oh it's going to be typical not AMG engine but you know powerful engine where it will run out of puff above 5,000 revs and it just seems to keep pulling all the way to redline so it does feel well I mean it feels pretty much like an E43 AMG I suppose so yeah it's a lovely engine And yeah, steering, so this has got the formatic system, comes as standard on the E450s now. And you do notice it, actually. So, obviously coming out of a corner, it's, you're still rear-wheel drive, basically. Like, you feel it pushing you, but the steering, the actual feel of the steering itself is quite different. Um, and you, the weird thing is, if you're attuned to cars, you'll notice it immediately. Like, some four-wheel drive systems, like the one in the BMW M5, you have to actually drive it quite hard to kind of feel the formatic, not formatic, uh, the X-Drive system working. Uh, sacrilege, I can't believe I just said that. Uh, but yeah, in this, the second you turn the wheel, even when you're stationary, you feel like there's an extra weight, there's an extra, you know, bit of stuff going on in front of you, and of course there is. Uh, which is a shame, I think their steering feel could have been a little bit better than that. Got even more fog this morning. Oh, I do love it when it's a quiet road. But yeah, front end grip, like, I mean the grip is there and the chassis balance is very good. <laughs> as you can see but it's just the um, oh, yeah it's the chassis itself the suspension is just not tuned to being perfect I would say it's still very very comfort orientated and I have to say though after living with this thing for just over half a week now I kind of get it. Like, I do kind of get it. Brakes are very good, actually. Let's do a, a little sound check through here. See, it does sound good, doesn't it? And throttle response is fantastic in this. Watch out for this lorry. Do you need a car to be quicker than that? Not really. Daily driving is about bang on, I'd say. 
anything around the 300 horsepower mark is always really good. Yeah, brakes just can't go wrong with them really. And then if you do sort of get yourself in a bit of trouble, the four bag system just pulls you around. But if I try and make this thing understeer, yeah, it just kind of pulls you. So not super set for oversteer, but that's not really what this car's about, is it? It's about, you know, going fast, but safe. And that it does very well. It's not trying to be an E63 and be a complete yobbo in the corners. But yeah, so you've got a little bit of AMG sound and the chassis, you know, it's comfort orientated, but it still controls its mass. And as long as you know what you're doing, you're gonna be fine. The car's not going to let you get too out of control, is it? Like that is, that's quick. I can see why they gave it the formatic system, actually, because if it was just rear-wheel drive, you know, that with an open diff, you're just going to be sliding all over the place. And if you're, you know, a client that just wants something that just goes, Probably not the best choice, is it, to go for a purely rear-wheel drive setup? <laughs> the throttle response in Sports Plus is ridiculous in this. It's more responsive than the blooming M3. <laughs> just like you literally just touch the throttle and it sends you flying. Anyway, for me, comfort traction on just this is the mode I want to be in and I'm start I'm I really am starting to understand what Mercedes is about now because when you've driven Audis and BMWs for so long like they're kind of a jack of all trades especially Audis they just kind of do everything you know BMWs you know they kind of lean more towards the performance car for everyone kind of thing like even a 3 series diesel has fairly stiff suspension these days. Whereas Mercedes, I'm kind of getting that they're just like, you know what, 99% of the time, you're gonna wanna be sitting in a car that's ironing out all the bumps. You don't wanna feel any of that road beneath you. You just wanna feel like you're sitting in something, comfortable, quiet, no horrible smells are coming into the cabin, and you just want it to look really expensive. And uh, yeah, Mercedes do that, and it is really expensive. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of understanding it. Give it a couple more days, and you never know, there might be a Mercedes fanboy in me yet. Because at the minute, the only Mercedes that I like are probably the W204 C63 and the E63S. Everything that's non-AMG, I've kind of always been a bit like, meh, like, it doesn't really interest me. But living with one, yeah, I'm kind of getting it. The only thing they need to fix is this damn panoramic roof squeaking. You certainly don't get that in the other more expensive manufacturers. But yeah, also, cup holders in this. Fantastic for cans, coffees, all that kind of stuff. Terrible for plastic bottle drinks or glass bottle drinks. It just doesn't hold them at all. And the bottle of Coke was just like flopping all over the place. It's one of those things, manufacturers seem to really struggle to get right. And I don't know why, like, the shape of the bottle hasn't changed in years. So you'd think designing a perfect cup holder would be such an easy thing to do. You know, maybe it's not on the top of other people's lists, but for me, it's such an obvious thing, because it's something I use every day, really. And when it's a bit crap, it actually sways my decision on what car I want, <laughs> like genuinely. Anyway, to the gym next. You could call me filthy, or Molly as Hawachi, NYC, Timberland, Kudu, Ikoachi, LAX, touchdown, I ain't sleeping a beat, sleep on a beach. This is one, uh, not disadvantage, but one almost negative about having these Alcantara slash suede seats. And that's if you go to the gym, like me, um, and get very sweaty, these seats basically are like a towel, they just absorb 
all that body juice and <laughs> yeah it ends up smelling pretty terrible pretty quickly so yeah if you are going for one of these cars maybe think about getting the full leather option especially if you go to the gym a lot One thing a lot of people don't know about Mercedes is you get a free basket with your car. Well, technically not free, but you do get a basket for your shopping. Um, I don't really know how practical it is though, so let's find out. So great, got all the shopping in there, but now it's just kind of free to move around. I kind of feel like it would have been a better idea to just have like a hook or something. Like for me, I'm just going to use this. That works better, doesn't it really? This basket. I think if this had its own handle, or does it actually? No. If this had its own handle and then it sort of like clipped into something, then I'd use it because then I'll take it in the shop with me, use it as an actual basket, and then you just like clipped it into the car. That would be perfect. This is kind of, it's a neat idea, but needs some work. Well, the week is over, and uh, yeah, overall, this Mercedes E Class has changed my mind in a lot of ways about the Mercedes brand. Now, before we get into that, let's go through the pros and cons of this car. Things that you might not have noticed if you've just spent a couple of hours with it, reviewing it. Um, we'll start with the cons first, end on a high. So the first, I suppose it's a con. It's only like a minor thing. And that's the theme playing throughout the cons. Whilst there are cons, the pros massively outweigh them. First con is the door. Surprisingly heavy and it likes to hit you a lot. <laughs> like, if you open the door on any sort of incline, it will swing closed pretty violently actually. Um, and it has caught my leg a couple of times just unexpectedly. One of those things that you just have to get used to. The next one is that when you get in the car and you put your seatbelt on, it loves to really tighten you to the seat. Um, like almost strangles you. And I noticed when I took it out on a proper drive, it like really pulled me into the seat. And it sort of always seems to think you're gonna have an accident. And when the pre-sense goes off, it really like tightens you to your seat, which I suppose is good in that circumstance, but it's, it's the fact that it just happens a bit too often for my liking. Then the next con is staring us right in the face. And that unfortunately is the fuel economy. Now, the BMW M3 Living With Series, if you wanna go and watch that, I'll put a link in the top right hand corner. That did around the same MPG as this. We're talking 20, 22 miles per gallon. Um, and yes, I know this is a big engine and it's a fairly heavy-ish car, 1.8 tons. That is just not quite good enough. Uh, considering the fact I have just been driving this thing around in comfort mode, admittedly not in efficiency, but I haven't been driving it hard really at all, apart from one morning where I took it out and put it in Sports Plus. Apart from that, the rest of the week I've been driving it purely in comfort mode round London. And uh, yeah, 22 miles per gallon, that's expensive. You know, I've gone through 40 pounds in just four days, which, yeah. You know, if you want an E-Class and you want fuel economy, this isn't going to be the car to buy, clearly. But the pro is that you get a really nice buttery smooth engine and it does make this car drive like a proper luxury barge should. And then the last two are actually kind of like proper cons to this car. So the first one being the A-pillar. For some reason, at certain angles, it completely blocks out traffic. Now, obviously, you've got no B-pillar, so checking in your blind spot is easy. But with the A-pillar, it's weird. It's like, it covers just the perfect amount of road for you not to see. That it, you know, you end up in pretty awkward situations sometimes at roundabouts. Where you can't actually see a car coming, you go to go, and then, obviously, you have to stop again. Which isn't brilliant. And it's weird, because it's not like massive, I think it's just the angle that the A-pillar's at that really does it. 
And then the next one is something I think Mercedes should probably fix. So when you go into reverse, it has the dip assist where it'll dip the passenger side mirror. Basically, if you're parking next to a curb, it's useful um, on the off side because then you can see where the curb is. And that's great. However, once you go back into drive again to pull away, it doesn't come up until you've already moved off. Now, that seems like kind of a minor thing, but if you reverse off your driveway, which pretty much everyone does in this country, let's be honest, um, you have to manually raise the mirror back up again to see if there are any cars coming, or you have to turn your head all the way around. And you don't want to have to do that in your big expensive barge. So, ultimately minor, but it is something that they could probably work on. And then the last con I've spoken about already is just the panoramic roofs start to squeak in these. Um, and that's probably the most major one. Um, it's just one of those things you just kind of have to live with, which is a bit of a shame, unless you get one without a panoramic roof, of course, which, I don't know, I, it kind of, it's still worth it, I think, because it's just, it lets a lot of light in and it is nice. And once you've got some WD-40 on it, it's fine. And that really is all the cons that I can think of. So yeah, there's nothing really major enough to put you off buying the car. But there are certainly a lot of things that do make you want to buy it. So let's go through those now. Number one, whilst getting used to these screens and these touch controls is a bit daunting at first. I did get used to them. And then I forced myself to control this screen with the steering wheel controls. And after a couple of days using Apple CarPlay with this, I've realized this is much better than having anything down here, actually. And uh, it makes Apple CarPlay just so easy to use. You know, you've got this huge, I think it's like a 12.3 inch display. Controls, once you're used to them, are really easy. Skipping tracks is easy. And uh, yeah, actually a lot better than having a scroll wheel, which surprised me. Um, so yeah, if you do have one of these, or you're thinking of getting one, force yourself to use the controls on the steering wheel. They are definitely better than using the controls down here. The next pro is one that really surprised me actually, and that is the gearbox. So my favorite kind of torque converter gearbox, or gearbox in general actually, is the ZF 8-speed automatic, especially in BMWs as it's perfectly calibrated, really smooth. This though does have one advantage that that gearbox does seem to lack, and that's when you come up to a junction and you're in a car with a ZF8 speed, it sometimes waits for about just a quarter of a second after you give it a bit of throttle before it starts going again. And I noticed, I noticed this, especially in my BMW M140i, where you try to give it a bit of gas, car does nothing for about half a second, and then suddenly you're off. This doesn't do that at all, actually. When you get up to a junction and you're still moving, it's still just in the right part of the power band. And uh, it could be the fact this gearbox is combined with this engine as well. But it just seems to always be ready to go. Um, where it's not as good as the ZF8 speed though is on shift times and just... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not quite as good as the ZF8 speed when you want to do some sporty driving. But for smoothness, I'd say it's better. Uh, if you're driving around town a lot, it does actually feel a little bit smoother to me. Then the next massive pro for me is the driving position and the seats. The seats especially are just amazing in this car. You can get them in exactly the right position, you've got so much leg room as a driver, and yeah, you could do, you know, 12, even 14 hours in this car and you'll get out of it feeling just as refreshed as when you got in and that's where it is really really good actually is just comfort general livability you've just got so much room to move around and stay comfortable and yeah the fact you can just pull the headrest forwards is such a small thing but it makes all the difference in a long journey when you can just sort of lie back and rest your head for a bit then the next big pro, obviously you've got these two big displays, they're fantastic, but they're supported by even better equipment. So the reverse camera is brilliant in this. Really high resolution, really good refresh rate. 
I can't think of another, you know, non-360 degree camera system that's better than this one. It's accurate, it's fast, it's just, it looks high quality, and I mean, it must be high quality. Talking about high quality, the sound system is the last pro I'm going to talk about, because initially, in all the reviews I've done of these cars, I've kind of been left a bit, you know, feeling meh after listening to the Burmester sound system uh, in Mercedes of late, and yeah, it, it does kind of sound a bit, you know, average. Um, when you look at the speaker grills, you think, oh, this is going to be a really good speaker system. And uh, it is a good system, it just needs calibrating. So from factory, for some reason, they've made it very trebly, and it means when you turn it up, it basically just hurts your ears. Uh, but when you go into the equaliser and adjust it and fine tune it, I found putting the bass on them before, the mids on too, and then just leaving the treble as it is, it really comes through. And then you can hear every individual part of a song, no matter which track you're listening to, be it something that's bassy or you know, classic or whatever. And it is a good system. Now, it's not the best system in the world. I still think the Mark Levinson sound system in the Lexuses is a little bit better. But this is, I would say, on par with the Bang & Olufsen sound system in something like the Audi A6, which is really quite decent. And the other big pro that doesn't get talked about much is obviously having a fantastic and loud speaker system is great. But if the trim around it rattles when you're listening to music, for me it ruins the experience. The trim in this doesn't rattle when you're listening to music, and that is a massive, massive pro, because it means you've got good audio quality, number one, and two, it means when you're not listening to music, that trim that's just been rattling around isn't rattling around. Because <laughs> usually the speakers make everything go loose over time, and uh, thankfully that hasn't happened. So that's one big pro for Mercedes there, uh, which is surprising because a lot of the uh, quality in their cars hasn't been brilliant of late, so it surprises me that. And just generally, there aren't a lot of rattles in this car. It's only the panoramic roof that's doing a little bit of squeaking. The rest of the car is bang on, really. But anyway, that's a list of pros and cons that you might not have thought of, I suppose. But now, let's get on to how this car has changed my mind about the brand. So yeah, okay, I get it. I really do now. This car is designed to just make you feel like an absolute bowler. Their ostentatious ambient lighting, lack of B-pillar, so you can really spread your wealthy limbs and giant displays because, well, bigger is better, isn't it? Apart from the shallow observations though, interestingly this car really has redefined how I perceive Mercedes as a brand. Yes, at face value their cars can be seen as a bit chintzy, bits and glam kind of stuff, but once you're past the first four letters of the alphabet in the Mercedes lineup, you start to get some interesting stuff. To sum up the E-Class then, it's less best or nothing and more comfort or nothing really. It shields you from the outside in a way most cars just don't. It teaches you to drive with elegance and rewards you for doing so. You're not so much driving a car as you are commanding a luxury vessel. Accept that and you realise that cars don't need to be a jack of all trades. Yes, this isn't as sharp as a BMW or even an Audi. In fact, it's not as sharp as most cars on the road. But 99% of the time, you're going to be sitting in traffic, especially on UK roads. So if you want comfort, elegance, with maybe just a little bit of bling, the Mercedes E450 is a surprisingly good choice. That's a good number plate, isn't it? Jag. Anyway, as always, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Living With series. If you did, give it a like, and why not follow us, as you can see more content like this, and you can see everything we have for sale, which, as of this video coming out, this car probably is still for sale, so if you want to have a look at it, there is a link to our website down below. But anyway, my name's Tom, and you've been watching Paragon Cars. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.